Spotlight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Friday night, James. There she is. Nola Hurt. Coors Light. You know it's something special when you're drinking Coors Light. I never see you drinking Coors Light. I love it, by the it's way. It's the only thing that was here. Uh, oh, in the in the office? It's the only thing we uh, have. I'm drinking a little Stratka. Now, Stratka. I, had my special, I had my special watermelon beer here. Mm-hmm. This is a this is going out to everyone in the studio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who else? There's only on. guys here. There's only men in gonna, the studio. I'm gonna narrow Why down to two. Why are we drinking the watermelon beer that's gonna, like bright pink? Gonna narrow it down to two. You're you gonna narrow it down to two. I saw you drinking. No, one. it's not me. It's not me. We've we've hired. We've got a big outfit now. We got a big production. We're we're on YouTube's. Now, all of our shows are on the YouTubes, on video, audio, everything about it. So we had to hire a a bunch of new employees, producers, editors, whatnot. There's two people that are under the age of 22 years old. My money is on them. Okay. And I listen, if that is true, I am way okay with that. You see a little tin can of watermelon disaster in there. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's got that's got a, a child's fingerprints on it. I and by the way, it's it. not like watermelon Boone's Farm or something. It's like a watermelon yeah. sour beer. Yeah, and it's good. I like it. Yeah, you liked it. That's why I'm kind of like, yeah, you're blaming these other people, but I really saw you drinking a couple. No, I man, I like I've had to stay off the beer lately. We're getting ready for this cruise. Uh, starting to get jacked the fuck up again. I'm getting ready you in a get different it. way. Yeah, you are. Hot girl summer I'm eating cobbler. I'm drinking Coors Light. <laughs> and I'm coming for you guys. Okay? By the way. Hot. I ha- coming I, in hot. I, I had that watermelon beer uh, last, what was it, last Friday night when we all went out. Okay. To satellites and... I was I got in a cornhole competition. Oh sure, sure, sure. We you were a, drinking, yeah. You and Dan we didn't were get a drinking. We to talk about this. We were drinking those beers, hot pink beers. You guys were drinking. Yeah, it's the it's those watermelon sour beers, right? Watermelon sour, yeah. So what happened was, cornhole is like a, a gigantic game in the South. Maybe everywhere now. I guess I don't know. It's gotten everywhere because I know that I see people posting in California that have full on teams. They have competitions. It's on ESPN nine. I yeah. saw a thing. So yeah. my friends though, like have the, like their own cor- cornhole boards. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. And but it was never growing up. I know you probably had it growing up, right? I didn't. And so I, and here's the weird thing. So when we started doing uh, a, a lot of these live shows, right around t- tailgates and everything else, everybody was like, "Oh man, let's play cornhole." And I was like, "All right, cool. What's the what's the sitch here?" First to 21, and it's a, it's a fucking beanbag, right? And yeah. you throw it into a hole. Sure. That's probably 15, 20 feet away, right? Yep. Um, I've destroyed everyone at this game. I have never lost, right? In any city, anywhere we've been for any of these shows. And look, there's not a listener out there. If, you, if, if I've been to your city, you know you've been there and, you, and you've lost. I've never, and that's been a thing. And everybody keeps betting me. And we have all this shit on the other set for Drink It Bros podcast because – they keep having to send in things that they've lost on the road, right? One of them was like, I asked for a really obscure, Richard Dinoff, uh, a really obscure, like 1974 Rose Bowl MVP, Ohio State signed, uh, like, <laughs> the whole, a whole shit from that, right? Because mm-hmm. he was confident, I'm going to beat you. And I mean, well, it, this wasn't even close. So here's what happens. We go out on Friday night, and I don't play except for like three or four times a year. We go out on Friday night, and we get caught in a game with this fucking hippie, this long-haired hippie son of a bitch. It's like double the length of the Swayze hair. Oh that I have right now. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I'm playing with with my Should we co-host, talk about one of my how... best friends, uh, Dan, uh, Danthony, Danthony, oh, your bestie. Do we talk about how good he was? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> yeah. So he's fucking awful. 
right? I mean, Look, absolutely I mean, terrible. Come on, now that's crazy. He was really, 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 really bad. If but you, I don't if you know would if ask me, awful. if you would ask me, like giving me two options, right? To either have him throw or sure. just pull my pants down and uh-huh. show my ass yep. to the entire bar. I would have shown my ass the entire bar. I knew that was going to be the answer for sure. And I'm playing with, I'm playing against him and this guy's girlfriend, and they're fighting. Okay. But she's really good at cornhole, right? Been there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they end up winning two out of three because I, I have a weak teammate, obviously. And it was just like, <laughs> again, really want to point out that I've Hand never, yep. ever lost in a one-on-one cornhole match. So anyways, homeboy, the fucking hippie, starts talking shit to me. And he's just, he's kind of like, oh, nice game. Nice partner. Nice. Yeah, how do hippies talk shit? Like, how does that go? It's real subtle digs. Sure. And it's with, a, it's with a big smile of like, oh, mm-hmm. hey, brother. Hey. Very like patronizing. Yeah. yeah. And like as this game went on and you were you were behind us and like I was talking to a stolen valor guy. We'll talk. To, we can talk yeah, about exactly. That too, yeah. Um, and so as this is going on, like I'm getting more and more pissed off about it as it's going on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, look, it was best out of three. They they won him and his girlfriend because I had an awful partner who. Um, and who was in your partner was uh, Dan Holloway, Dan, Dan Holloway. Yep. Okay. You can follow him at Dan Holloway on Instagram <laughs> and uh, just hashtag cornhole all of his pictures because he is fucking terrible at this game. And so uh-huh. my frustration kicks in because I'm sure. a I'm a solo guy. Yeah, I'm a lone wolf. Obviously, I go rogue. Mm-hmm. Um, I do me. Yep. And uh, I grab this guy kind of by the right by the the goi the goiter the right guy? here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you call that chunky part of the arm right here? Forearm? Sure. The goiter? Whatever. Yep. Um, I, I grab him by the goiter and uh, I say, hey, man, before you pop the on flank. into that bar yeah. for your fucking 38th craft beer, um, why don't you play me one-on-one and then we can find out who the best is, you know? But uh-huh. I said it in a positive way, like in an upbeat way of like, huh, you know, we can hey, find man, out who the like best I'm, is. Yeah. No worries, bro. It. Kind of the way he was. Exactly. The same vibe. jovial yeah. way he was kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, jostling my ding dong, right? Sure. Um, it was kind of like, you know, Tim Allen when he turns into Santa Claus in that movie. Claus, obviously, you know, kind of jovial. And it's like, oh, whatever, right? That was my vibe towards him. <laughs> okay. It was very Tim Allen Claus. And he was like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And then obviously he's a fucking hippie and he goes, let's play for something, you know? And I'm like, Ooh, oh. What, what's the wager, yeah, right? Yeah, we playing for cash? What, uh-huh. are we, what are we, Bitcoin, what are we doing, homeboy? Yeah. And he goes, uh, I'll play for a beer. Knowing his craft beer from, you know, that was shipped over and Just one solid beer? ice from Germany or whatever it was. Stop being poor. Right, one beer, but it meant the world to him. And so here's the thing. Then this one beer meant the world to me. Sure. So I was. It was more than I a beer. A, it was more than a beer. Goddamn right it was. And I went into fuck yo couch mode, you know, mm-hmm. where I was just like, fuck this guy. Yeah. Here's the thing about him. He was really goddamn good at cornhole. And you could tell that dude plays every day. Mm-hmm. He probably lives at that goddamn bar. Let's be honest about it. Um, yep. He knew his way around. Trust you know, fund hippie, you reckon? Or keeps, is he a real hippie? 100%. Okay, no, okay, okay. Trust fund hippie. And he's just BMW like, hey, hippie. Yeah, yeah. And his fucking girlfriend, like, you know, the heels and all that other shit out playing on the gravel. It was like. She wasn't bad, by the way. She wasn't bad, and she wasn't bad looking, but you could tell she wouldn't be with a guy like that if he didn't have a fucking trust fund. And it was just like, eh, mm-hmm. just spare me your fucking dingling juice. Yeah, and I think like once he started... Now, c- carry on. Go ahead. Yeah, spare me your dingling spoiler. juice there. I don't want a spoiler alert. Yeah, That's Captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain Iron Tits. And um, that's what her name, her nickname is, obviously. Uh, so... I, he was like, yeah, let's, let's fucking, let's go. Yeah, let's pay for a beer. Let's pay for a beer. And I was like, yeah, let's fucking do that, mm-hmm. right? We get into just an old school battle. Uh, you know, I'm talking Bird versus Magic, Federer versus Djokovic, like Sampras versus Agassi. We're going back and forth. Uh, dick tip for dick tip, you know. Battle of the tip bags, battle yeah. of the bags, battle of the bags coming down at you. Is that you. what they call it when it's I cornhole? believe so. Yep. Anyways, first to twenty one. Uh, we were tied at twenties, and uh, I, I, you know, just needed one on the board, and I knew I had him at that point. And I turned to him, and I was like, "Oh, what well, was my last throw? I had the last bag. He didn't have any." And I go, "Do I just need one?" I knew goddamn well I needed one. You right, know. Right. And he goes. Yeah, yeah, you do. And I was like, huh. Well, then I was going to win this. And then I tossed it, boom, landed on the board. Didn't even bother going for the hole because I didn't have to. Sure. And uh, 
uh, as we were walking, like he was genuinely pissed off about it, mm-hmm. you know, that he had lost because you could tell he's never lost at this game. Uh-huh. And then as we're walking away, uh, he's like, hey, man, what kind of beer do you want? And I was uh, like, uh, wasn't about the beer. Uh-huh. I just wanted to fucking beat you. So yeah, you're like, stop being poor. You don't have to. You don't have to yep, give me a fucking yep, beer. Yep, yep. I'm I, good, I, brother. I walked away. Actually, I'll pick up your whole tab. Yeah. Walked away. <laughs> no look back. Didn't look, didn't look back. I don't know what happened with him and his girlfriend. I don't know if they crossed the street and got hit by a fucking Uber. And she started talking to Dan, actually. Well, yeah. look, Dan's, Dan's a, a curious mistress, you know? He slides in and... Uh, <laughs> a curious mistress. Yeah, he slides in like a little lady, uh, pulls up his skirt, uh-huh. and uh, just kind of sits on their face. Uh, and that's Dan. That's Dan for you. But either way... I raised my, my arm like a champion, uh, mm. no lie, after the throw. Like, I mean, like Bird after winning, Larry Bird after winning a three-point contest in 86. Yeah. Just went full championship mode so he could see it, and that's how I walked off to you. Um, but we were, we were drinking those watermelon beers all night. You were. I got you. Bright pink beers. Yeah. Yeah, I felt real strong, So, real and sturdy. again, that's why I'm wondering who drank my beer the two kids in here in the, okay yeah because again you no we loving it you no. were drinking okay okay it, it was no, a no, no, thousand no, no. degrees here mm-hmm. and i was sweating like patrick ewing in the fourth quarter of a game seven i was just like fuck man because we we're outside obviously they don't have in indoor cornhole when they invent that though forget I mean, about it mm. it's over did you see my instagram today no I posted on my story, uh, the car in front of me at a stoplight oh, had a fucking sticker. Life. Yeah. Yeah. That just said cornhole life. I but <laughs> pissed myself in my car crying, which is scooping out. Do you need that? Maybe? I was just scooping out cups of urine out into the streets. Like uh-huh. so good, dude. I was really, really fucking amped about it. And uh, I don't know where you get that sticker, but I would never, ever in a million years put a sticker a t-shirt or, or fucking booty shorts on that said cornhole life, you know? Yeah. Cause that's, that's kind of signaling the other way. It's kind of signaling. So like, I, I would imagine you would put that hashtag at the end of your grinder account, you know? Of what? Hashtag cornhole life. <laughs> what up? Like cornhole that. life. I like you know? that. I might I mean, put that as my Instagram. Just, oh, gross. Just the whole, the whole description will just cornhole that. life. Yep. Yeah. You bet you will. No pictures of any cornhole at all. After. No, just no videos, nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with cornhole. Just my description. Hashtag cornhole life. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, yo, man, what's the, are you I big, keep waiting for like a, you big something cornhole about cornhole or? to come up. Nope. Nope. Just Mm-mm. super into anal. Super in the anal. Speaking of anal, if you're going to do it, do it on a ghostbed.com. <laughs> slash drinking bros. Uh, nobody, nobody in America is better equipped to handle anal sex than a ghost bed. I don't know if they like these reads or not, by the way. You have talked to I don't hear anything. Them? No, I don't. Should I, we? I don't hear anything back from them. Now, so. I, the grandma one, I was a little bit worried and I thought maybe we'd get a call. What your granny likes? What your granny likes and clapping those granny cheeks. Oh, yeah. On the ghost bed. And so I was wondering well, how look, they were feeling about that. But we, they're cool, man. We're also uh, less than, what, two months away from shit. From when I, I, get, I get to take a little alien home from Area 51, Jabes. Quit. Quit. The clapping is happening. And when it does, it's going to happen on a ghost bed. Get your mattresses and pillows from ghostbed.com. Best mattresses in the biz, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, if you're a military first responder, you get an extra 15% off. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click that button. Uh, enter your info. Oh, and fucking shoot. I'm going to shoot. Yep. All That's for ghost, ghost bed? bed. Eh, why not? Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 36 months. Pay as you go. No interest. Program. Nobody's doing that on the internet. <laughs> Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> what I'm drinking right now. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. What you got your strike force in? Stradka. I'm drinking a Stradka. Mm. Strike force and vodka. I got a little bit of grape in here and a lot of vodka. A little bit of grape, a lot of vodka. <laughs> because I'm on one. Fuck it, I'm on one. 
Ooh, mama, you don't know my name, but I know that. that that's not a thing. Uh, Strike Force has got four amazing flavors. Orange, original, grape, and lemon. 10-pack, uh, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle that you can just boom, boom, pop a couple squirts in and go. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com today. Get a little Strike Force. No carbs and no sugars. Last longer than fire of our energy, too. Kick that fucking can, brother. Brother. StrikeForceEnergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. And as always, they got a subscription. If you want a little subscription in your life. I feel like that was a very Theo Vaughn thing to say. Yeah, subscription. Subscription. Script. Yeah. Uh, Last but not least, this is what you came for, folks. StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rag it? There it is. There it is. That really just bounces right what? off the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you like that? Everybody behind the, the scenes treble? is like. Do you like whew, the treble? Whew. That's. Uh, or real... the bass. <laughs> you like the treble or the bass? You bass? like a treble or a bass? Straightrazors.com. They got everything you need if you're a real man in this life. If you're a real man, you like the bass. If you're a lady, you like the treble. Give me more treble, Teddy. I need more trebles. Give me what a is that from where the band trebles, is called Here Daddy. Comes Treble? I don't know. Is it The Office? I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way. It's acapella. I think it's the acapella band Here Comes Treble. They got beard oils, mustache waxes, Grandma? conditioners, all you need in this life to be a real man. <laughs> or if you're pregnant. Past the second trimester, shave your bush <laughs> with a straight razor from straightrazors.com. Revolution 20% off will get you uh, all the business you need uh, to get wet in the shower. Shave it up. I try so hard. Shave up that beehole right before you take home the aliens, you know? Come on. You know they're going to throw a finger in there. We've all seen E.T. Uh, we got a date tonight, James. Sorry, yeah, that was all sir? straight razor. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Straightrazors dot com revolution twenty percent off. Yep. Yep. We have a date, like I said, yep. getting things back on track. Yeah. We seen E. T. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I when would. That, when that finger goes up, I all would. I all I picture is going into a bee hole. Gosh. Yeah. We might be going on a date. Elliot. I'm not sure. I might get. Elliot. I might be busy. Uh, we're going to the. We're later. going to see the Tarantino movie tonight. We record the Friday shows. I mean the Monday shows on Friday, and um, gonna be real Z's with you here. It's looking good. The numbers are looking good, and I'm amped about this. Numbers, and then also so right trusted now, friend sources. Right now, uh, I mean this is this is breaking, but obviously by the time you hear it, you'll know the final outcome. Uh, f- it's heading. It's heading toward north of 40 million could be one of uh, Tarantino's highest openings ever. Um, I, I love, love, love we've, I've bitched about this all year long. We need an original movie to break out. Fucking finally, leave it to QT. All my friends in LA have, have hit me up. Because in LA, look, we used to make big events out of this. We used to go to Arclight Thursday nights, midnight, or the 8 o'clock. Now they're, they're doing 8 o'clock screenings. Sure. Get there right on time, and boom, one of the stars would show up, or, or Tarantino himself, and be like, hey, here's the fucking movie, and it was awesome. Um, it was great. Tarantino never showed up, did he? Yes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's rad. Not he's, at one that you've been at. Yes. He did it. Uh, fuck. It was either Django or Hatefully. I forget. Um, but yeah, he showed up, and... Um, and then usually one of the actors will go to another screening or whatever. That's the that's one of the the few things I miss about LA is when a big movie comes out yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just like everybody in town is trying to make it in some form of the entertainment industry and everybody goes to the movies. Everybody's just as excited as you are. It's not like you know the fucking idiots we're going with tonight. You know, yeah. Where it's just like all right, cool. Right. Um, I'm sure. I guarantee you, walking out of our, our movie tonight in North Carolina. We're going to get eight people who are walking behind us and be like, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, uh, damn it he's I like that thing. Pulp Fiction yeah. one. I like, I like DiCaprio when he's in Titanic. <laughs> Titanic. I don't, I don't know what he, what he was trying to do with this. I don't like 
like Brad's hair. In there. Yeah, he looks. Oh, he looks. He looks older. It's, not, it's almost like they made him look old. Yeah. I, 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 I want to see Legends of the Fall, Brad. I don't want to see this Brad. It's like <laughs> fuck you. I kind of wish he was younger. Jimbo. Yeah. You know. Uh, you, 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 you dumb fuck. Um, either way, we're going to see this movie tonight. <laughs> Um, I'm amped about it. All my so my friends went last night, obviously. Okay. Thursday night, and they saw the shit. And I was getting you were you were in bed with me, obviously. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're on the rocks, but we're still <laughs> yeah still in the same yeah, room. There was, a, there was the body pillow in between us, but yeah, yeah we were. Yep. And there was a boombox playing Billy Ocean in the middle of that, just because I was trying to. Yep. And kill I made one of those queen. those old school, like you know, when you wanted to separate from your siblings yep. you don't have any nope. everyone knows that uh that he's an only child i don't know how you would forget it lifeless right yeah only child yep. so when you have siblings sometimes you have to make these curtains on the ceiling or whatever to kind of separate this is my spot this is your spot that's right. what we've done well that's what you did and uh, duct tape i was only child like you don't get to you don't get to cross this duct tape yeah. which i put across the, the bed uh, as well i was only child uh, I think my parents said only one we need. Um, that's what they called right. me. Stop at the best, right? Yeah, exactly. Why mess with perfection? Success? Yeah, yeah. You think Michelangelo made another fucking statue of David? Goddamn right he didn't. I mean, he made other stuff. Yeah, but no. yeah, no. Nope. Oh, okay. I don't think he did. I think he stopped right. with that. That was the only thing. Yep. Uh, anywho, all my friends did said we the same that thing. Up? Did he uh, make anything else? Oh, okay. Did okay. he even make the statue of David? Uh, that would be another thing to look forward to. <laughs> be, was it Da Vinci? Wait, nah, I get no those, idea. I get Don't those care. Two bruisers mixed I'm up. I'm on a roll. <laughs> you betcha. Um, so all my friends hit me up and they were like, look, this movie is fucking amazing. And they said, it is one of those movies that you will watch over and over and over again. And whenever it's on, you'll just pop it on and watch it. And that, that's how memorable it is. Um, and everybody was amped about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, brother. You fucker. So to recap, because for the last few weeks, we've been talking about just the garbage heap that has become movies with, yep. with all this fucking dog shit out there. Mm -hmm. We said, hey, man, because yesterday didn't do it for us as far as original movies go. And it was just like, is there is there one thing there is this opening at, at north of 40 million dollars? Um, this could be it. Oh, it's fucking great. It's great. But does it have to? I mean, it has it's, to be Tarantino at this point. I mean, I, I don't think it does. Go, no. I really don't. And um, uh, look, his, his previous high was in Glorious Bastards of 38 million. Okay. Um, this beat, this is going to beat that. And it just goes to show if you make a great fucking film, man, people will come out to see it. You don't have to do all this other hogwash ball wash shit but the debate is now online already and this is friday it's 6 p.m right now sure is does it have to be tarantino exactly what you said or like, brad pitt and leonard i mean you have to look at the cast as well like what are people going out but for? it's a fucking hard r like I, that's tough man in today's society and it's great like it's great for everything all the way around the problem is is we're losing him very soon He's going to make right. one more movie, and then he's out, and that's it. And we're all kind of fucked at this point. And Marlon Wayans was on uh, Drinking Bros podcast uh, Friday, and he was talking about original movies and what's happening and all this other stuff. And uh, uh, the Tom Cruise movie, Edge of Tomorrow, came up, which I fucking love that movie. It's kind of like Groundhog's Day where he just keeps right, but it starting was starting over in a war. Did it do well? It, it, it did in China. It did not here. <laughs> and, well, here's the thing. It did so well overseas because it really was a great film, okay. right? It did so well overseas. They are going to make a sequel to it here. Um, and uh, because it's kind of like John Wick. John Wick didn't do well here either. Mm -hmm. And then it did well overseas. And everybody's like, oh, man. They saw it later. And they were like, this is a fucking dope ass movie. What was the name of it? Oh, because the, uh, the movie was called Edge of Tomorrow. And that's a fucking shitty name. Right, right. But, um, and it doesn't really tell you. What it is, yeah. What it is, yeah. So... I think Jared showed you that. He movie, did didn't at he? his house, man. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck this fucking bullshit. Yeah, and he goes, man, I just got my fucking with new, Emily Bleasy. I just not got my new 4K TV, man. I want to show you this movie, and I was like, like Jared, oh, man, God. it's fucking 2 a.m. What is it, man? He's like, yeah. Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise, and I was like, Guaranteed. negative Ghost Rider. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, why don't you just ride me like you were, you know? What? I'm sorry. 
What'd you say to Jared? Oh, uh, not the, not having gay sex. I said, why don't you just let me go to bed, man? Because no, I'm what'd straight. You say before, what'd you say before in the... And the what? The one thing that you said before. Which one was that? You said one little thing before you... Uh, I, I don't on. know. I've been drinking. Um, anyways, um, I was like, well, why don't you fucking ride me a reverse cowboy and let me go to sleep? That one. Oh, I'm sorry? The one you just said, let me just, let me keep riding me reverse cowboy. Man, I, can't. I don't want to watch the movie. It's Jamie, 2 Jamie, I'm not wearing headphones. There's something that I'm not hearing that she is apparently, but either way. Uh, it's just yeah. a little. So I end up watching right this movie before, yeah. at uh, 2 a.m. and mm -hmm. then, you know, finish it at 4. And Emily Blunt was in it too. Bleasy, yeah. Ble yeah, the Bleas dog. <laughs> um, and it was great. Like the movie was fucking great. And I was like, oh, shit. How come I didn't go see this in the movie theater? How come it didn't do well? And then, boom, that's what happens. Uh, you can you can make origi original shit. Um, I saw the sequel or the trailer for Zombieland 2. Yes. Gosh, it looks really good. Hey, look. Did you like Zombieland? I, I, liked, I liked the that first one. That was an Ridge. It was. I like Woody Harrelson a lot, obviously. Yep. Um, Bill Murray in that movie was fantastic. He was the you know, only was thing. Cameo. In the world at that point, um, but I liked it. I I, I like that movie, and I don't mind a sequel. And you know, I don't mind a sequel if it's in a relatively timely fashion. Like I wish, truthfully, I wish they would do a, a sequel for Range Fifteen. Yeah. Um. I, I, like it's written, it's done. I, I wish I wish everybody would come together and uh, and do that. Right. Uh. Before it gets too late. Before you're, you know. Yeah, so it's like when Cats comes out, like I want, I want the sequel oh, to be right. Do you know nope. what I mean? Like no. maybe even six months after would be no. great. Again, if I'm able to get an erection after Cats comes out, <laughs> uh, it'd be a fucking Just Christmas looking miracle. for those cat buttholes. Yeah. Where are the bee -holes? buttholes? Where are the bee holes? Where, where are the, the buttholes? Where the vaginas I didn't at? see one. And now every time I see a cat, I see their butthole. Yeah. They show it to me. I see it when they're walking, whatever. Yep. No buttholes. No. No cat buttholes in this. that is the problem. Uh, my only issue with the trailer. It wasn't the, the human hands and feet, huh? No. Just the cat buttholes that Just really got you. Just unrealistic that you don't see, when uh, they're walking away, you don't see an exposed butthole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I'm, I'll write the producers right now. I'll probably go on Twitter and say, uh, uh, who is it? Who, it's your favorite guy who makes all this shit. Hans Zimmer, Hans Christian Anderson. No, Andrew Lloyd Webber. That's it. Whatever, man. Fuck him. Uh, yeah. Hey, where's the bee holes on those cats? That's right. all right on his Twitter feed. Yep. Hey, man. Uh, congrats <laughs> on your $150 million movie. Where's the bee holes on those cats at? Uh -huh. Sure. Hey, Peter, man. Yeah. Check out the breast exam on Channel 9. <laughs> also, where's the bee holes on those cats, man? I need a nice cat bee hole to get me started today. Uh, but I'm I'm amped, man. Um, I can't wait for tonight. You and I will hold hands, clasp. I'm gonna cut a little hole through the bottom of the no, popcorn bag, put my penis I don't right like in there. That. You know I don't like holding hands. And me. then I'll be like, Hey, James, I put a <laughs> I put a, a Twizzler in the popcorn. <laughs> Go find it, and you know my fucking. Yep, grabby hands, a little bit of butter in there, and all of a sudden I'm getting <laughs> jacked off at a Tarantino movie. Um. <laughs> Just Over. like the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Which one did you go? Who'd you go with Hateful for the eight. last? Yeah, Hateful yep. Eight with my buddy. Yeah. yeah. Not like getting jacked off during <laughs> Hateful Eight, you know? Very frigid temperatures. Everybody slamming the door. Sure, sure. That'd be hard to get a boner in a, watching a, a, a frigid movie like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. It is what it is, you know? Sure. That's kind of the rule. Yeah, they don't have a lot Tarantino of porn in like colder temps, huh? No, they don't. They don't. They don't have porn. They like to make settings. it look very hot, hot and yeah. sweaty always. Cuba. That could be an interesting thing. Cubano. Snow porn. Ah, a little snow porn for you, yeah. Right, little ski porn. If you can get, if you can achieve wood in the snow, looking at people just cold as shit. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine being a dude, uh, back down, ass down, and then you know somebody trying to ride you in the snow? <laughs> God. God. Fans blowing. Uh, how do you how do you even stay wet? Now, I, I, we're probably dipping into waters we shouldn't. Um, That's why I don't like to watch those like the outdoor, you know, like network porns that are like against a tree or like they went camping and then they yeah. like I don't I just don't. 
I always think about I ants. I get uncomfortable. Yeah. Bugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there isn't, like besides California, right? Right. It, there, there isn't a place where there's like non, non-humidity, no bugs. Right. Like that, you know. Maybe a rattler here and there. That's about it. Mm-hmm. All you have to worry about. But you hear that I coming. I get distracted by the landscape, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, I love a just a gorgeous little <laughs> clearing, you know. With oh, the, yeah. They always have, like, the trees going around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's hard for me to focus. I put a little, I put a little salt lick on your lower back. Maybe get a deer out of there, you know. <laughs> See if a deer can, a little doe can run out of the forest. Give you a nice little lick on the back. And now we're into more of my, t- it, once it, it'll get weird like that, yeah. now we're talking. Now we're all ramped up. Yep, yeah, uh, yeah. But just like two people like a on dough. a blanket in yeah. a clearing. On a, on a picnic, like a thin picnic mm-hmm. blanket. And it's never thick. There's never a little bit of a mattress. It's always just a super thin blanket. No. Right on the ground. Yep. And there's a, or no blanket. a half-eaten jelly sandwich, and you can see the jelly out there, and you're like, man, the ants are going to be in that in like yeah, two minutes. That's all I'm thinking. And it goes from ants to dick to vag to cancer. Sure. And then you die. And that's, uh, that's outdoor porn for you. Uh, go to Pornhub.com. And, I'm kidding. <laughs> if they became a sponsor, that would be the end-all, be-all dream, by the way. If what? Pornhub. Oh, dude. Became a sponsor. would be great. Be it'd be really, really great. Go to Pornhub.com. Uh, check it out. And then we could put our playlist on there, kind of like uh, celebrities put their playlist on Spotify. Faves? Yeah. Where it's just our like fave clip. Uh, what do you jerk to? Here we go. No lead up either. No. No, just straight to the What do you jerk to? Mm-hmm. Put your top ten amateurs, top ten porn stars, um, top ten guy on guy. Wait. Hang on. I did not mean to say that. What'd you say? I, what was the little thing I, that I you forget. said right before? I forget. A lot of this, uh, the kinks, we're still trying to work out in the new studio. Can't hear myself. So, um, didn't say guy on guy. I did not say that whatsoever. Jamie's going to um, let me know what you said right now. Nah, he's definitely not. Uh, the, the wrist, wrist list. list. I like that a lot, actually, Jamie. Yeah. What you jack to? The wrist list. Jamie, calm down, dude. I'm a big fan of that phrase, actually. The wristless. What is it? You know, we're all fucking comedians around here, huh? Everybody, everybody's got a wristless. You know? <laughs> is everybody. that a thing? Did everybody? I'm in a pregnant. Did you make it up? I'm in a pregnant dog. He made it up. Oh, he is? Yeah, we're gonna have to credit him for that. Now. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Congratulations, Jamie. I'm stealing it. And never giving we're you stealing credit. it and giving you partial. Yeah, I'm in new uh, pregnant dogs. That's kind of my my new porn when I'm into you know. I need a pregnant dog just kind of they just lay there. dragging their tummy across the floor. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of what that's my that's my new thing that I'm trying to get into. OK. Um, or get out of. Sure. Ugh. Yeah. Get out of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about. I, it, look, would it be a show if we didn't talk about Trump or Bette Midler? <laughs> oh, no. Not if we're talking I about your Twitter feed. Muter, yeah, I finally muted that bullshit so I didn't see her stupid shit. Again, she says the most racist shit on Twitter, which is fine if you're, you know, a racist and like, or semi racist and you establish that. Sure. Like yourself with Asians, right? Yeah, but again, and You've I've said this it. before, every, we, we have agreed as a nation. Mm. That making fun of and being racist against against Asians is okay. Correct. It's the only acceptable that we all love, and Asians love it too. They um, do. It's it's a lovable racism. So Bette Midler's under fire for asking how how much Trump pays all of his black rally attendees, which Eesh. that is a Eesh. crazy assumption, by the way. And how old is she? Because I'm, I'm wondering where her where she falls in the grandfathered 70s. in racism. She's in the, in the 70s. She's in the 70s. So, again, she can ask stuff like that. No, she if can't. If she was 60. She's Bette Midler. And, um, Just saying. She's a gajillion followers on Twitter. Right. Who's following her is what I don't understand. Uh, Who enjoys oh. Bette Midler that much that you're like, man, I need to follow her on Twitter? Probably my mom. I need to get her hot takes on Twitter. Sure. Yeah. What is Bette Midler into? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, look, she'd apologize before. I, I have a feeling she's just going to keep apologizing. At a certain point, when you get this rich and this famous, you should shut it all down. All of it. 
Because I realize that there's going to be a point exactly, where we're right? out of touch with everything. Yeah. I want to shut everything down and then just go quietly into the dark. Um, and if I, you don't I, need to. Yeah. What are you doing? I thought about this when uh, when we watch those award shows and they they always wheel somebody out in a wheelchair who's super fucking old. Mm-mm, and, um, mm-mm, mm-mm. and you remember that you want to remember them for how yep. great they were instead of just disappearing. They fucking wheel them out in a wheelchair. So you and I uh, like the Connery thing or the Gene Hackman thing where it's just Ugh. like, hey, man, is there, they for those, did it right. For those who don't know, they were tired and they just said, look. I am too. Uh, I'm. I'm too old. They didn't say their appearance or whatever. They just said I'm too old to act anymore. They burned out instead of fading away. And you've never the... seen a fucking photo of them nope. since. Nope. It's been five, the six years. Lifelong. It's the, it's the age old question. You know who else did that? Was Johnny Carson. Johnny oh, Carson okay. said, "Dude, when I'm done, congratulations." There was a rumor that he packed up all of his shit. I think he, was, he had a house in Palm Springs. That was it. If you wanted to go see Johnny, you would have come to his fucking house. He never came back to LA again. I love it. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. Uh, with, with me, like a Bette Midler, whatever, right? If she would have gone quietly into that sweet, sweet darkness. Um, <laughs> she still does shows and shit, though. I know. But if so, you know. She oh, could yeah, she shouldn't go be. quietly into that sweet darkness. And, um, you mean die? Whatever. Whatever she's going to do there, you know? Sure. Sit in a, in a chair and... You know, watch CNN and be angry about her life. Yeah. Whatever it is, I don't really give a shit. Just don't make it public. Like with me personally, I think I just shut it all down, man. Yeah. I'd follow my kids and whatever they're doing. There's little dummies on Instagram or whatever the next thing is going to be. Sure. Fuck box, whatever it's going to be called, you know, where it's just like, oh. Dumb, dumb feed. Yeah. Uh, I'll follow that, you know, see what they're doing. Other than that, it's not like I'm going to be posting selfies of me and you at 71, <laughs> you know, just being like, oh, hey. We're at the we're at the surf house. Hotties. Yeah, we're at the surf house. Hotties on the loose. Shots. <laughs> Maybe we will. No. We'll have a super ironic no, old person Instagram. Unless you grow old and be sweet, but like, man, I I can't. It's hard to name people who are old and sweet, you know. Uh, Mick Jagger, fuck. And he's what seventy. He just turned seventy six today. He just turned seventy six mm-hmm. today. But like, dude, thirty-one-year-old wife, sure, a uh, new baby, brand new baby, oh, and uh, it sounds like a nightmare at seventy-six. So they oh were God. like, they were like, hey, what is Mick doing when he goes out in the USA? Right, this has been a big thing uh-huh. online, and uh, we were in the New Orleans concert, and uh, they said he went out in the French Quarter and went to a restaurant. Okay, yeah, on a Friday night, wife, kid. The Love whole it. thing and uh Love it. they said they were like the, the the staff was just like dude we were blown away because uh we got in on friday night remember everything was closed oh we, my went, God, outside yeah. the, we went outside we went outside of the french quarter go? Yeah. um in they the named french the restaurant quarter? yeah okay i'd open up so for we went Mick in. too i'm sure they let them know I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I guess you they know. said there was only like four or five people in there. I think and, I have uh, an idea of how Royal Street is where they were at. People. Okay. So, um, anyways, they went in five, six people. That was about it, and had a dinner and bounced, and you know, enjoyed their life. He left a gajillion dollar tip. And he's just Mick, dude. Good for him. And he's just Mick. Like he's he's consistently awesome. If you could do that at seventy six, I just don't know many people who can do that. Mm-mm. You know. Yeah, There's, and pull it off and have it not be tragic and have it not be, you yeah. know? Because even the 31-year-old wife, you're like, yeah. Anyone else, you'd be like, oh, God. Yeah. But him, you're like, sure. Sure, yeah. Everybody was like, sure, great. He's out with his kid. Of course he is. He's out with his newborn. brand new, newborn at 76. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no bigs. No bigs. That's normal life for him. I'm, I'm trying to think of the coolest person I met in their 70s that I enjoyed going out with. Um, and I think it was Barry Boswick. Yeah, no, that's true, huh? Yeah, and that's um, fucking fun as shit. Actually, we we spent a lot of time. What in t- it was twenty fifteen when I was on that book tour, and I do a bunch of those comic cons, and uh, we spent a lot of time together. I think it was about nine days because I had three of them. They were three days apiece, and they always put us together because you know, obviously, he he was my muse. Still is, but he doesn't do my fucking shit anymore. Um, well, you know, no. things will all come around, I think. 
fucking I, look, man. People just need to calm down. Once they calm down, everything goes back to normal. My but content's too you. aggressive. I hear you. Whatever, man. I hear you. I'm and that's off about your it. choice to do aggressive no, content. No, but I've, always, I've never changed. Everybody else has changed. That's my problem exactly. with it. Exactly. I'm just saying. That's my problem with it. So anyways, Barry had toned down his shit, and uh, we're going through a little tiff right now. Mm. I'm fine saying that. I don't give a shit. Because um, I love you them. You heard it here, folks. Naming names. Yeah. Yeah, Barry Boswick, yeah, I'm calling you yeah. out, brother. Okay. Because um, I love you. I love you too. It was fucking dog shit. I, I think, you know what it was? I'll, I'll tell the audience. I don't care. I've had, I've had a few drinks tonight, so buckle up. Buckle up. I'll tell the audience exactly what it was. I hired him for uh, When Darkness Falls, He Doesn't Catch It, the audiobook. And he read it and was like, this is fucking hilarious. There's no way I can do this, man, because I've it's just too hardcore these days or whatever. And I'm just like. Man, we did we did FTR American Badass together. We did Helen Keller versus Night Wolves together, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. And I was like, I know. Don't fuck me now. And he's like, well, I don't know what people would think and blah, blah, blah. Because uh, it was, it's, it's a sensitive time for people, right? For pussies and all that shit. And I said, hey, man, like the last audiobook you read was The Notebook, which is true. Okay. So he, re- he did the audiobook for The Notebook. Oh, dang. So, yeah. So if you go and listen to the audiobook for The Notebook. That's awesome. Barry Boswick. Sure. I said, look, do me a favor before you make this decision. Look at the ratings for The Notebook audiobook and look at the ratings for my audiobooks. For Night She Cries While He Rides a Steed. And, when, and uh, that was it because it was the sequel, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, look at the ratings for Night She Cries While He Rides a Steed versus The Notebook. Tell me who's higher. Okay. My, my book was higher than The Notebook. Obviously. Well, no. That, that, to me, that wasn't obvious. Like, well, why I, you I was, said why you told him to do that? But everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. knows the Notebook, right? right? Right. Everyone. I was not expecting my books both now to be higher than the Notebook. No way was I expecting that. Especially Barry Bostwick read the entire Notebook. How dope is that? Yeah. It is still higher than both. Both books are rated higher on Audible than the fucking Notebook, and that was how I left it. I said, "Man, I love you, but your last book was the Notebook, which is great." But mine are higher, and it's the same fucking content. So Let's move up. Yep. And uh, that was the last time I talked to him. That was it. And I got a call. They were doing something in L.A. for him. And I, I was doing a live show somewhere. So I couldn't attend or whatever. And they, were, they asked for the screening rights for FDR American Badass with, I think it was Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I said, yeah, you can have my blessing or whatever. And they're like, you're going to be there. And I was like, nah, I got to do this live show or whatever. And they were like, oh, you want to record a message for Boswick? And I was like, no. Because it would just be me calling him a fucking pussy. And, uh, yeah. Okay. I was not stoked about it, for real. Real I don't know if you know this. Do you, do you know this story? No. Yeah. Real beef. Yeah. I was pissed. Okay. I, I was really pissed off about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look. So that's the story with that. Um, because I... I th- there are certain people you write for, right? With the movie we're going to see tonight, Tarantino. Um there was a rumor he wrote this with DiCaprio in mind after mm-hmm. working with him in Django Unchained. After I worked with him in FDR American Badass, he became my male muse. I enjoyed writing for him. Mm-hmm. I know he can do anything. I know he can play any character. And uh, I wanted him to do um, Boombox Bigfoot and this other movie I was, I was working on or whatever. And it's like, fuck, man. Because when, when I went to those Comic-Con things... Every single person w- was coming up to him for FDR American Badass. Oh, yeah. Well, that shit. And I was just like, hey, man, this is the fucking future and this is what it is. Like, so it was disappointing. It sucked. It sucked. And that's, that's where we're at with that. Okay. I don't know, I don't know what, what got me to that story, but I don't know. My that's what podcasts are. My legs are sore. Yeah. What about these cat B holes we're looking for? Um, Ran a quick seven today. Did you really? Oh, yeah. When's last, like you're, you're one of those people who can just pick up and start running miles. I haven't fucking been able to do shit, dude, for over a month. Like nothing, not gym, not, I mean, it went for a walk maybe. Right. How you feel? <sighs> Quick seven. I mean, my legs hurt. I'm a little loosey goosey. Runner's high. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I listened to? Andy Grammer, did you hear that song on the Today Show that was like, I did, yeah. I don't give up, I don't get up on yeah. Is he a Christian singer? I don't know. That, that's when, whenever I hear super positive lyrics, I always, my mind automatically goes to, 
Uh, Christian Rock. Right. Yeah. Was he? Did you look him up? Um, he's not Christian Rock, but he is like an oh 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 way oh. God damn oh, it. Like a uh uh like an Imagine Dragons. Yeah, and yeah. oh like or a oh, oh, one, oh, one oh, Republic. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Or like a, well, just super positive, super, yeah. you know? Yep. Eh, I Probably Christian rock. I don't know. I was em- embarrassed a little bit. I like, saw somebody with a running. Jesus t-shirt on there. Oh, okay. So okay. it could be Christian rock. Whatever. It's super uplifting. I wonder you know? if Cone is. Now that we're talking about it. If what is? Cone. Mark Cohn. Mark Cohn, yeah. Oh. Walking in Memphis. Yeah, Memphis. Walking on my feet and we don't have a beer. Uh, I, wonder if, I wonder if I've secretly been a, a Christian rock cone head all these times and I didn't know it. Oh, shit. I wrote something in one of these books or scripts or who knows. I've written so much shit at this point. Who fucking knows? But I just said, man, it, like I compared whatever something awful was to like. I was like, it's kind of like listening to a whole song and at the end it says... I believe in Jesus. And you 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 were rocking the fuck out in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end, it was like, oh, shit. I'm on the Christian station? I've been there. I'm on the fucking Christian station? Creed. Remember Creed? With arms wide open. And then we all kind of found out that they were super Christian. We were like. I didn't know. Are they? Yeah, Creed. I thought it was just like it was something weird with his kid. By the way, I just saw him on TV the other day. He looks great, guys. He actually does. He looks identical. He looks great. He looks almost better. He d- I'm going to throw it yes, out there. He does look better than when he was in Creed. What yeah. did he say? He had a fucking drinking and drug problem or some bullshit? Yeah. You know. He's. What no. Do you think it was? Yeah. He said it was a substance abuse and. Whenever somebody says substance, just tell me the fucking substance. I what know. was it? It's cooler if you just say Coke. I had a fucking right, had Coke, a Coke problem. problem. Yeah. Because everyone has Peels. their thing, right? You're never like kind of into heroin a little bit of coke here and there yeah. a little bit you have a thing a thing yeah so for sure. what, it, if you're that bad into a substance yep which one is it alcohol it could be alcohol some people say substance could for be. alcohol whatever could be heroin coke pills don't just say substance charm pcp primo tell me P-dog. what we're dealing tell me what we're dealing with yeah here. you know what i'm saying yeah uh i don't know what it was <laughs> But with arms wide open. I, it would be awesome if he said, with arms wide open. And then he just said, put the coke inside my hair. Yeah, yeah. Put the eight ball in my fucking anus so I can walk through the airport. I need to do some on the plane. I know this rain. Yeah. Stap. It's classic stap for you. That's Scott Stap, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are you a yes, stab the gap yes. type of lady? <laughs> Are you fucking moving on, dude. What? I don't know what the fuck is going on. Stab but we need the to... gap. No. Nope. James. Yep. No. Nope. That's what they call his female fans. They're going <laughs> to stab that gap. Uh. <laughs> uh. We're going to stab that gap. Staps for gap. Gaps for staps. Yeah. Gaps for staps. Right? With beef wide open. It's the old beef. Um, yeah, he looked great though. I mean, good for him and all that shit. <laughs> Tan, in no. shape, tatted up. He looked good, man. Dang. No, you know. I'd hate to say it. Do you know what I mean? I don't like to say it. Yeah, no, I don't either. You know, because it's Creed, right? I know, I know. You know what Andy Grammer is like? It train. He's the new train. Ah. So it's like every song is like super pa- poppy, super catchy, super. I like the old train, you know? Yeah, and they're still around, you know? So yeah. I can't say the new train because train is still here, but. Yeah. Well, I, look, I, you know I love train. Drops to Jupiter. <laughs> Always splashes against my ball sack. Right. The drops of Jupiter. Oh, um, yes. By the way, somebody sent me this, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up right now because a, a good trusted friend of mine. Um, sent me this and who had seen that Tarantino movie last night. We're going completely off the rails here tonight because we're getting hammered, but um, who gives a shit? Uh, it's fucking Monday for the rest of everybody else. It's Friday night for us is when we're recording. Ew. Gonna, what are you doing? I'm going to call this bitch out. This bitch out. 
I'm going to call bitch out. Um, my buddy just sent me this article and just said, yo, the Tarantino movie is fucking amazing, right? Uh, please roast, this is what he says, please roast this chick live on air about her fucking article. Um, will do, sir. Uh, Who is it? My captain, my captain. Um, the chick's name is Sarah Stewart. This is in the New York Post. Okay. I actually enjoy the New York Post, by the way. It's one of the fat, like the last newspapers I, I guess because I lived there and I always read that. I was never a Times guy. And the Post. You're the Times or Post in New York? Yeah. I was always Post. I enjoyed Post. Isn't Post more entertainment stuff? It is. It's just funner, man. Like they never really. And page six is in the Post, Yeah, right? yeah, correct. It was a blast. I, was, I love that. I, and by the way, one of the biggest joys of my life was being in page six. Why were you in page six? For the book, for At Night She Cries. Nice. Yeah. I did a signing with them at a bar there, and um, New York Post was there, and they were like, uh, what, would you can, what would you say about this book if you were going to get anybody to read this book? And I, I knew I had like one quote, and I was just like, well, I'll tell you what, if you, like, if you love Lena Dunham, you're going to fucking hate this book. And that's what they printed on page six, New York Post. Perfect. And it was great. It was great. Um, still love New York Post to this day. I can't believe they printed that, too. They bleeped it out. It was great. Uh, either or, this chick name, her name is Sarah Stewart. I'm going to call her Chick, too, on purpose, because her article is, Quentin Tarantino's exploitation has no place in Hollywood anymore. That's the name of her article. Um, you know, she, what she's saying here is that, you know, his, his movie was, you know, it's obviously in the 60s. Uh, men were men. Female actors were starlets. And the words, me too, had yet to be hashtagged. Um, and she, uh, here's where, so here's where she goes off the rails, right? It, it shouldn't, I'm, I'm going to quote her directly here, so I'm, I'm not misquoting this at all. It shouldn't come as a huge surprise that a guy, meaning Tarantino, who partnered with producer Harvey Weinstein up until the latter's shattering downfall would feel a bit nostalgic about the good old retro days of the film biz. But just like Harvey... Tarantino and his au revoir are things that should now move quietly into the boy bye column. <laughs> Fuck you, Sarah Stewart. Uh, Why are you saying boy bye? <laughs> Why is she saying that? I don't, like, and it's a an white article. girl with glasses, oh, Sarah Stewart. Oh, God, don't put boy bye in your article. God damn it, man. Um, right? Fuck me, dude. In Fuck your article. Fuck me. I just, why well, take the time, man, for this stupid shit? Like, and I love how, because this article, by the way, um, I'm, I'm looking at the timestamp, and this is key, by the way. Always do this if you're at home. Look at the timestamp of, of these fucking articles, because a lot of times you're reading shit from like three years ago, and you're like, what the fuck? Because um, it was like, maybe yeah, this was after the fact. Nope. This was yesterday before, so the, and the timestamp. It was 5 o'clock yesterday, so that means the early showings hadn't started yet. She okay. wrote this before this movie even came out. She was probably thinking, she looked at early tracking numbers and thought it was going to bomb. Now it exploded. Yep. And this article's up and out to the world, and she looks like a fucking cunt. Girl, um, bye. Yeah. Girl, bye, Sarah Stewart. <laughs> Girl, bye. There's no place hey, for this girl, anymore. bye. There's no place for this exploitation anymore. Actually... There is, um, because you know what this movie is going in. You know what all of his movies are going in. That, it's like walking into a Spike Lee movie and saying, ah, I wonder if there's going to be any black people in it. You know it's a fucking Spike Lee movie, man. Like, fuck you, Sarah Stewart. Um, I'm glad. Oh, look, I'm glad it crushed. And, uh, you know, she goes on later in the article to say Tarantino worshipers are going to gush over the movie and over the own Hollywood. We need to change our ways. No, we don't, Sarah. You need to change your fucking ways um, and stop being a fucking gimpy ass millennial who's probably writing this article for three hundred a pop. That's what they give like freelance writers. There's mm -hmm. no way she's on full staff with this shit. Um, and just understand that there is a place for different type of movies and filmmakers to exist in the world, and not your own. Not sleeping on someone's couch. Not fucking living off of some trust fund. Um, because let's face it, your salary at the New York Post isn't affording you to live in the city of New York right now. I hate shit like this. I'm, look, I'm glad it blew up. I'm glad this movie oh, blew up. Oh, for sure. Because I'm tired of fucking hearing shit like this. So, 
Uh, if you want to give a, a nice little shout out to Sarah Stewart on Twitter, yes. I'm sure she's there. There's no H in Sarah. Okay. Which is nice. So, girl, bye. Girl, bye. By, by the way, if you're going to go down that road of the, the whole fucking, uh, it's a new time, it's a new period, cool, then have you heard of cultural appropriation? Is you just jacked it from fucking the African-American community with stealing, boy, bye. Mm-hmm. You want to go there? Yeah, you want to go there? Sarah, you want to dance in this fucking circle of fire? Congratulations, Sarah. Want to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, here we, we go. We can do it. You want to get nuts? Uh, this is all my game. You want to get nuts? Let's yeah. get nuts. Um, speaking of which, since we're on the Joker, oh. uh, they dropped three new picks uh, in an article for uh, Joaquin's new oh. movie. Man. Can't do any wrong. In my mind. Uh, they're saying it's darker wrong. than The Dark Knight. Yeah. Um, and that it's, it would it's be. the Joker that everybody else wants. I'm looking at these pictures now, man. I'm I'm in, man. I'm not into superhero shit, but I'm into this, man. If uh, it's good enough for Joaquin, it's good enough for me. One would think. I think the surprising thing for me is Todd Phillips, man, comedic director. Yeah, but what I was the other serious rad. thing he did? Um, he did the Jonah Hill movie, uh, the War with, Dogs. Yes, which I liked he a lot. Did another one too, but yeah, it was good. I like the movie a lot. Yeah, I, I look. I, I like Todd Phillips. I don't know why he didn't get a, along with the rest of that comedic crew. I'd love to have him on the show and figure it out. Because he did shit a lot differently. Like, he was unlike Apatow. He, he hates improv and all that other shit. He's just like, yeah. hey, man, let's try to look, make these movies look beautiful. Which is why The Hangover blew up. Because it was cinematic and all that other yeah. shit. But uh, I heard he only let, like, Galifianakis improv. And that was about it. Which, let's face it, he probably should Who should've. else wanted to? Oh, probably Chang Wang. Wang Chang. Uh, what? Ken Jong? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is that his name? Ken Jong. Yeah, it's Ken Jong. Probably like. But him. you had Ed Helms in there, who's, who's <laughs> decent at improv. You know, B Coops was fine with probably just saying the words. Like, oh, hey, dude. Man. He was probably like wanting it. I know you have your vision. Tell me something, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, eh. um, But either way, man, I, look, way to reinvent yourself and do all this other shit. Maybe Todd Phillips, man, is smarter than everybody else in town, and he knew. Hey, man, comedy's dead. I can't make any comedic films. Fuck it. Let's just go hardcore. Yeah. Because I'll be honest with you. If I was a comedic director um, at that level, I mean, I'm a fucking comedic director at an independent level, you know? Let's face it. Under $2 million level. Like, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm at this level, like the hangover comedic director level, the Dark Knight would be, or, or uh, the Joker would be super fucking awesome to do. Super oh, yeah. fascinating. Oh, yeah. You'd have to get a guy like this to do it, though. Um, Joaquin. He's the only one. I'm trying to think. Who else, who possibly, who else could you trust with that, I guess? Because I, I think you like the great actors, right? You couldn't get Tom Hardy, because Tom Hardy's already played like Bane and Batman and shit like that, right? And he's not like. He's great, but he's not great like that. Right. At complicated. Right. Super. And I, and I know, look, because uh, we're talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and we talked about DiCaprio on the last episode, um, who's like the last dramatic actor who's doing shit like this. He won't do comic book shit, so he's out. Um, I don't think he would have even. Uh, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't even entertain this. Not one single second of it. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd want him to. To no Joaquin Phoenix, like, because you believe he he would fucking kill himself, right? Yep. You believe that he's crazy enough. He's and all also that other shit. um unpredictable enough. Oh yeah. Whereas like the stuff that he's real done life. is so all over the place. Yeah. That in real life, he's found a way to to make it so you don't really know who he is as a person. Yeah. Which is perfect for stuff like this. Oh, yeah, 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 for this sure. Why, like, Ben Affleck can't be Batman. You know too much about his fucking life yeah. to even think for one second that he's someone else, right? Well, guess what? He's not Batman anymore. So. No, he's never great. He's the worst one. <laughs> Keaton was the best. Obviously, he, we all know that. He is back, though. Affleck's back. Back what? They did a uh, Jay and Silent Bob movie. It's called The Reboot. Okay. And I was... When they announced it, I wasn't in for it. I, obviously, you know, I know Jason Mewes. He was in Pool Boy with me, and I cast him in that and all that shit. Right. Um, 
I was not into it, and then the trailer dropped, and it was I was like, ah. Okay. I, I dug it, and uh, Affleck's in it, and he looks great. Looks great in it, and uh, he Got was at gonna... yeah, he was at uh, Comic Con last week, and was with those guys, and he was in all the photos, or whatever. Man, he looks amazing. He's How probably he's able to way ha- I know probably way happier being at Comic Con with those guys than he was with fucking Marvel. Yeah, he I just mean, seemed I mean, fucking miserable every time he was doing press for Batman. It was just like. Look, we know the truth of that shit. None of these guys want to do this stuff. No, um, I know. The Joker, though, is different. Like, I, that's a fun role where it's like, hey, if you want to try to figure out how great you are as an actor, you do that. Because Heath Ledger won a fucking Oscar, right? Right. And you know what you're up against. It was Jack, Jack Nicholson before that. Like, you know exactly what you're up against with that, where you're like, all right, great. Mm-hmm. Two. Two huge people. Like, let's see if I can fucking best this. Yeah, yeah. Batman, though, it's like, uh, man, you had Keaton. You had I, Keaton. You had uh, Christian Bale, man. You had Christian Bale right before you. Yeah, exactly. Like, why you even took that role is it's beyond crazy me. to me. Yeah. Um, and now it's uh, Homeboy from Twilight, Robert Pattinson. Oh, yeah. Who's Batman. And it's we'll just like, see. Ugh. I'll give him a chance. I don't know, man. I, I'm done with all that shit. The Joker, I'm in for though, man. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with this whole shit. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, you, you gonna, you gonna rage tonight? You mean rage? Cause we're getting sushi too, right? Yeah, we are, James. A little uh, I'll get sake. some dry walk chicken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little sake in that beeho. <laughs> I like how I announce it like a DJ at a club, uh-huh. you know? B-holes. Yeah. I got a really nice B-hole voice. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Announcer only for B-holes. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the B-hole. Nope. Yep. I think if, I, if, if, if your name was Bob and you were a boxer. Mm. Bob the B-hole, you know? Oh, perfect. Yeah, right? Perfect. I think it'd be good. I think it'd be right on time, I think. Um, <laughs> I think that train would be coming, chug-a-lugging down the track I right on time. I think that train would be right at your doorstep. Um, let's get to the uh, revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Um, revolutionary figure of the day to me is, uh, man... I'm going to, I hate to give this to a football player. I do, because not, we're not a sports show. No. Um, but the reason why I am is because he was on this show. Okay. It was Jalen Ramsey. Okay. Cornerback for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm-hmm. He's in the last year of his contract. He said, hey, man. He was great. He was a great guest. Yeah. But he's on every commercial, and he gives okay. the best interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was on the show. Uh, was it a year ago, a year and a half ago, whatever it was? Um, he's fucking awesome. Really great guy in real life. Um, just super aware of who he is and all that other shit. He tried to get a new contract uh, before this season because this is his last season under this deal. Jacksonville's not really happy with how outlandish he is and like the, the wild shit he does. Okay. So they didn't give it to him. So he said, great, man. Instead of sitting out, because a lot of players sit out and they're like, I'll sit down. No complaining last year. Let's give me a new contract. He's like, great, man. Tell you what. Uh, I'm going to be a professional about this. I'm going to play the last year. I'll show up at training camp, do all the shit. And then uh, I'm going to take my, my sweet ass down the road and go sign with another team after this, this year is over. Mm-hmm. Training camp started yesterday. Training camp uh, for all the players. He showed up and had his buddy drive him in a fucking Brinks truck. <laughs> An armored Brinks truck and then his buddy gets out dr- drives him to camp and is he's got this old it's tom coughlin who's the the fucking gm now of that team mm-hmm. old school guy hates shit like this pulled up right in front of the training facility in the brinks truck had his buddy jump out of the car open up the back of the brinks truck it's just bags and bags of money and then he hops out with his two bags and goes to training camp and he says 
mother, you're going to fucking pay me this year, dude. You're going to back up the truck and pay me this year. And walked right into, right into his hotel. It was so oh, glorious. Oh, boy. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, hey, boy. Love it. I love you, Jamie and Ramsey. <laughs> love you, buddy. Uh, it was a fucking boss-ass move. I enjoyed the shit out of it. It got a lot of press. Um, yeah, it was hilarious and, and amazing. He backed up his own Brinks truck. I love it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, great dude. We'd love to have him back on the show again. Uh, maybe we'll have him back on when he signs with his new team next year. Because let's face it, uh, I don't think Jacksonville, eh, they could do all right this year. Uh, we got the NFL preview show, show coming up uh, in about three weeks on Drinking Bros Sports. Subscribe to that uh, as well on iTunes. Jabes, this was fun. Weird. I like doing drinks with you on a Friday <laughs> night. It always gets weird. Look. Listen. Learn. Learn, look, and listen, and that is all you will get from me. <laughs> For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone, except for you, Sarah Stewart. Good night.